Okay, you can see, boy, <coughs> exhaust is going to be fun on it. It always is. Uh, it is way over this way, so take that as a grain of salt. What I'm looking at is these right here. Looks like his extensions, I'm going to cut them off and uh, I'm going to use the Ford E350 uh, motor mounts. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Fords. Ford liked to use the spear. It's one bolt that goes down and the uh, motor mounts are V-shaped, you know, to counter the V-shape of the engine. And there's just one big bolt or sometimes two bolts that come down into these funky looking slotted holes. On the trucks, the F-Series and stuff like that, you run into that a lot. In fact, on that Ranchero, it even had them. Uh, they are a good mount. They're an easy mount, and they're but the mount on them is huge. A uh, lot of rubber. It, it's made for vibration dampening and all that, so you don't feel the motor. But this is a hot rod. I want to feel that, you know. <laughs> I don't even put radios in cars anymore because I, I, I want to feel them pistons slapping up and down in there. Anyway, on the E-Series, they had to move the motor way forward over the cross member. And with that twin I-beam front end that Ford oof, used, it made the cross member huge. And they had, on the Vans, the E-Series, they had to move the engine up. And so that's why the bell house or the oil pan on a E-Series uh, Ford looks like a Mopar. It was to get around all of that and move it forward. Anyway, on them, they used, uh, how can I say it, uh, without pissing the Ford guys off, but uh, yeah, they use a very small block Chevy looking motor mount, you know, with the one bolt that goes through the center and then rubber it all the way around. I mean, they look almost identical. <laughs> That's the mount I'm gonna use because that mount is nice and tight and I can get it down in there. You can see how much room I'm gonna not have, especially around that steering box. That's kinda got me a little bit worried. Anyway, I can come up Let's see. You can see I got a lot of, a lot of hood clearance there, and if I have to, I don't want to because it takes, it, it'll be more time. But I can bring this whole thing up by cutting out that felon hole, cut her back here, and raise this whole hump up all the way back. Uh, yeah, that, that gets into dangerous territory for time. Uh, I've done it a million times, and in fact, you kind of see it done in that 39. We moved that one way up. Actually, I wanted to go another inch. Uh, you, you've seen that in those videos. Uh, my early ones, when I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> but I, every car we do, we try to get the oil pan above, at least to the bottom of the cross member. Here we go. That way, when you get these things low, you know, you don't have to worry about raised manhole covers. Uh, you're driving down the road and you, on the freeway and something on the road, you can straddle it and you don't have to worry about your uh, oil pan taking a beating and dropping all your oil on the road. <laughs> Watching that oil pressure gauge go, Zip! that's spooky. Anyway, so we try our best 
uh, to get at least the oil pan level with frame, with the bottom of the frame. So if anything bad happens, it always hits that cross member or the frame of the car, because uh, then it'll just skid right over it and you know not hurt anything too bad and scratch some paint without dumping all your oil or all your transmission fluid on the ground. So anyway, long story short, or short story long, however you want to look at it, that C6 is actually a little bigger than I thought it was going to be into that hole. So I might have to raise that hump. I hope not though, because that's pff, time. Anyway, let's take another better look at it. And you can see I'm way high here. I flick that screen. Way high in the nose here. It's got to come way farther down. That cross member back in there. You can see it's awful tight. And that, that's going to be tight. As I drop that back down. Come back around on this side. Passenger side's always easy. I got lots of room there. And I probably will run the stock manifolds on this for right now. I still got plenty of room here. Well, by plenty, I mean, yeah, I got some room there. <laughs> Ooh, she's gonna be tight. And down below there, you can see uh, she's, she is close. Uh, firewall, she can, can come up some. Let's see, yeah, let's bring her up. Okay, there I'm touching firewall or the upper side of the, not bad. Like I said, these are coming off. I'm cutting these off and I'll build another pedestal to match up to those uh, E-series motor mounts. Or for layman's, it'll look very Chevy in there, let's just say. And looking down this way, looking at the, that's about where I want it. That gives me a lot of good clearance there. Whew, that daggum steering box. <sighs> that's gonna be interesting. <sighs> you can see that back exhaust port there. That is going to be interesting. These linkages are coming off. I knew they were going to be tight in there. There we go. So that all, that's all coming out. And I'll stick the shifter on the floor. I was debating on going, leaving the shifter on the column and converting it to a column shift, but you can see I'm I'm running out of real estate here real quick. I am that way, so I, I will pick up a little bit here. And again, I think those E-Series manifolds will work on there. So tomorrow what I'll do, I hate doing it. <laughs> I am not looking forward to it. Tomorrow I'll go in and I'll, uh, I'll crawl under that motorhome and pull the pull exhaust manifolds in a van in the snow. <laughs> oh, it's hot rodding. It's fun. Uh, Uncle Tony says it all the time. And in fact, I got to get me one of his shirts says embrace the suck yep because it you have to do that in order to like to do this stuff uh, don't let that stuff get you down because 
it's all part of it. And uh, you, you go into it with the attitude that <laughs> this is going to suck. It's going to be. Think of all the stories you can tell later on on how you did that. People will laugh. You'll be, you'll be able to laugh about it and just have a good time with it. It's going to suck while you're doing it, but think of five years from now when you're able to tell everybody, yeah, look what I had to do. <laughs> It'll make for a good story. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, you'll see me probably leveling this out a little more, and then I'm going to block it up. Uh, leave the cherry picker on it because it's coming right back out. All I was doing there was checking clearances, getting an idea of where I'm going to have to go, what I'm going to have to do. Uh, this is phase one. This is the very, very first phase. You can run over things with a tape measure a million times. Get every one of your measurements right down to the micromillimeter and then drop the motor in and find out it's totally different. So <laughs> the best way to do this stuff is just get it, throw it in there and get a good eyeball on what it is. So I'm going to quit yibbery abber in here and uh, get back to busy trying to figure out where this is all going to go. Oh, and another thing, the reason I was saving that uh, oil pan, if I have to cut and chop on that oil pan, there's another good reason to keep one of these old uh, blowed up blocks a lot around. Every one of those oil pan bolts is like having a welding bench. All I got to do is flip that thing back over and I can cut and weld and everything on an oil pan and not even warp it an inch. <laughs> it clamps it all down and holds everything from warping so you can lay a good, you can do a good weld without worrying about warping things up and chasing leaks for the rest of your life. Anyway, then an old set of heads, if you ever decide to make your own headers, which might happen here, it's all dependent on that steering box, an old set of heads is wonderful to have. You just throw your header flange up on there, cinch them down good and tight. Then you can throw your pipe up there, have it bent however you need, and then go to welding. Uh, and the bolts holding it to an old dead block that you don't give two craps about, you can cinch that sucker up tight so it doesn't warp and weave on you. Little tidbits. Uh, on some of the stuff that, uh, well, like that 51, the, the 51 Chevy F350 that we built, that's how we did those headers. Uh, just set an old 460 head up on the bench, bolted the head, header flange down to it, started welding, and it didn't warp that flange one bit. And that was just one of those cheap Speedway flanges that you can get for I'm not going to mention prices because tomorrow they'll be twice the amount. You know how it's going. Anyway, I'm going to quit yibber yabber in here. Looks like, oof, I don't know how, 30 minutes. I'll chop this one down a little bit and uh, uh, go to leveling this up and getting more of an eyeball, hands-on feel of what I'm going to have to actually do to make clearances to get this sucker in here. Okay, meantime, I'm going to keep that metal hot and here we go.